This is the Brunsviga Model B adding machine from the 1980s. It has nine sliding digit inputs here. A big wing nut type crank over here. Another smaller one down here. And another big one over here. These are on a sliding carriage that shows eight little digits and 13 big ones. And the real business, big heavy duty crank on the side. The whole thing sits on a wooden slab. I even have the original metal cover with intact leather carrying handle. This is probably the oldest machine in my collection. The design is due to Vilgot Theophil Odner, a Swedish engineer who was working in St. Petersburg. He had a job working in a factory machine shop owned by Ludwig Nobel, the brother of Alfred Nobel. The story is that Nobel had a Thomas arithmometer, which was the true original first ever mass produced adding machine, which was made starting in the 1850s. They say that uh, Nobel had one and Odner was in charge of repairing it. And while he was taking apart one of these things, he had some ideas for improving the mechanism and eventually in 1874 he patented his new machine. Odner's big improvement on the arithmometer is the pinwheel gear mechanism. Machines with this basic design are called pinwheel calculators. The pinwheel mechanism was a major influence on machines later made by Monroe and of course the legendary Curta. Odner made pinwheel machines with his own brand, but in 1892 he sold the patent rights to a German company called Brunsviga. And Brunsviga were the ones who really brought this machine to the world. By the early 1900s they were selling them in America. Brunsviga's sales guy in the United States was named Carl Reuter, or Reuter, and all the Americans sold Brunsvigas have his name on them. By 1910, the adding machine industry had become a big deal, and there were three major machine types. The Odner and Brunsviga pinwheel machine, the key-driven comptometer made by Felt and Tarrant, an American company, and the printing machines by Burroughs, another American company. Just by the look of it, the pinwheel design is the odd one out. Look, there's no buttons. Computing machines in the 20th century are all about buttons. Just look at those buttons. Some are circles, some are octagons. If you don't prefer the octagons, you're wrong. But this one has no buttons at all. This is because when Odner was building his machine, I'm not making this up, buttons hadn't been invented yet. In the 1870s, nobody would have expected buttons on an adding machine because there weren't really buttons on anything. The Thomas arithmometer didn't have buttons. The Pascaline didn't have buttons. The Tronce didn't have buttons. Napier's bones didn't have buttons. The abacus didn't have buttons. The Hindu Arabic number system didn't have buttons. Actually, I looked this up. I don't think anybody knows for sure, but it seems like the first buttons showed up sometime in the 1890s. In comparison with these other machines, it seems weird that the Brunsviga has no buttons, but actually it makes a lot of sense. See, buttons are used to make something happen. You know, ring a doorbell, shoot the Pac-Mans, beep the beep, beep, beep. Dials and sliders are to specify values of things, like how bright are the lights, how toasty is the toast, how loud is the please don't call me. Buttons are used to make things happen. Dials are used to specify values of things. Actually, for the purpose of entering numbers digit by digit, a dial or a slider seems like a great choice. Contrast that to the other machine types. Are those buttons really appropriate on those ones? Well, on a comptometer, I hit the button and it adds that number. Great! On a printing machine, I hit the button and nothing really happens until I turn the crank. See, pushing the buttons on this machine doesn't make the addition happen. It just indicates which digits will be added when I eventually turn the crank. Not great! So I like the dials. Anyway, let's talk about how to use it. You set the number on the dials and then you turn the crank once all the way around to add it. Check out how those dials spin around inside the machine. Crazy. Every time you add, it increases this little counter down here by one. You can also add in other digit positions by sliding the carriage at the bottom. So if I dial in the 45, I can add 45 like this. 
or I could slide the carriage one position to the left. Now it's in the tens digit and it'll add like 450. By using the counter and the slider, you can do big multiplications really fast. Like for say 55 times 36, I dial in the 55 up top. I crank it six times in the ones position and then three times in the tens position. The counter over here will shift positions too, so it helps you keep track of how many cranks you did and in which positions. Here's a much bigger one. It's still pretty easy. You dial in one of your numbers and then you start cranking until you spell out the other number on the counter. Not bad. All these wing nut things will clear the numbers. This one clears the answer. This one clears the counter. This one clears the input dials. Though you can just do that with your meaty hands if you want. The crank has a cute little locking design. The knob that you hold has a little spring in it that locks into the resting position at the bottom. So when you want to turn it, you got to pull the knob out a little to disengage it and then start cranking. You have to always be pulling out on the knob every time you go around so it won't lock again. But the spring is loose enough that this is really easy to do. One of my complaints about the Monroe Model L was that the knob wouldn't always lock into position when you want it to, and this one's design is a lot better for that. Nowadays, these pinwheel machines are much more expensive than those other types. This will cost at least three or four times as much depending on the condition. But don't get me started on the Curda! The Odner pinwheel design is basically a big spinning cylinder with a crank on the end. The Curda was a super miniaturized pinwheel machine you can hold in your hand. You could even fit it nicely in your pocket where all your money used to be. I didn't really mention it yet, but this thing comes screwed onto a piece of wood. Real wood. This is the only machine I have with wood. The original metal cover hooks into these brackets. There used to be a little lock here with a key so you could close this thing up and then carry it around by this leather handle. It says Brunsviga on it, in quotes, with a period. Carrying this thing around would have been like carrying a big briefcase full of bricks with sharp metal corners too. Now that I think of it, that could come in handy if you're out walking late at night in a dark alley. I don't go out looking for trouble, but I know how to improvise. You gotta be ready if a stranger runs up to you and demands some multi-digit multiplications. I'm here to start some static, I'm running.